Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have a special delivery from the North Pole by a guy carrying a paramilitary too. Actually, not the North Pole, but Northern Wisconsin, Marinette, Wisconsin. If you guys don't know where DLT trading is, now you do. This episode is brought to you by them. Be sure to look them up for all of your knife and EDC needs. And uh, I'm gonna—I've said this before, but I'm gonna throw it out right now. Best complimentary stickers in the game. Look at this. I mean, who else has stickers of Santa looking like a badass carrying a paramilitary too? No one. DLT trading. That's who. That's all. That's the list. Now, let's take a look at this special delivery. And it is something that I've been really wanting to check out. Not just this model, but this feature on this knife. What we have here is the Jared Ozer F22 with the Lee Williams kickstop. Now, I gotta say, I've been wanting to check out a kickstop for quite a while. It's been on a good amount of different models. I believe they're all made by Riot, if I'm correct in saying that. I think anything that has a kickstop on it is going to be made by Riot. At least that's all that I've seen, because I have seen some Peñas and other stuff like that with the kickstop on it, which I know is also Riot. Uh, but this is a very, very special knife here, one that uh, I've always admired Jared Ozer's work. But if you've ever seen the prices of his customs... They're very, very expensive, um, kind of out of my price range, and they're hard to get because he's super popular. So this is a great way to get an Oster design and uh, one with a pocket clip. Some of his models, or a good portion of his models don't have pocket clips, they have slips. So a lot of good things going on here. And I wasn't too sure what to expect because I had some question marks about the clip. I had question marks on how I would like uh, this kickstop here, which we'll talk more about in just a second if you're not familiar with the kickstop. And uh, we'll just go over this knife because it is a very, very enjoyable one, but comes with a somewhat steep price tag. Let's take a look at the overall specs before we hop into the full review of this knife. We have an overall length of 7.875 inches, a blade length coming in at 3.375 inches, and a blade width of 830 thousandths. Blade thickness on this guy is 125 thousandths with blade material of M390, a drop point style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.5 inches, and a handle thickness uh, right around 500 thousandths. We have a handle width of 800 thousandths and handle material of carbon fiber scales with titanium liners. And of course, with titanium liners, you have that... Uh, steel lock bar insert up there to prevent any wear and tear on that titanium we have a locking mechanism of a bolster lock and i really i'll talk a little more about this when we get to the handle i really really like the way they did this bolster lock uh love it as a matter of fact we have a user of a right hand only tip up carry a weight coming in at a pretty reasonable 3.2 ounces for a decent sized knife 3.2 ounces not too bad at all um, as I said before, designed by Jared Ozer. A lot of you guys probably know who he is. If you don't, he is a custom knife maker. So there you go. He's been around quite a while. Uh, makes some fantastic EDC pieces. Um, but I will say I, a lot of them are on the smaller size. And this is not a small knife. So I love seeing that as well. Uh, price, $385 for this. $385. Now there's a lot of things that factor into that. You have the kickstop that's being used, and of course, Lee Williams gets a cut from that, I'm assuming. Uh, it's a Jared, Ozer, Jared Ozer design, so Jared's going to get a good uh, boost in the price of this for his name and his ability, rightfully so. And then, of course, it's ma manufactured by Riot, so uh, that's going to add a significant chunk of money, too, because as you all know, Riot is a very premium, very high-end, very expensive. There's no way around it. So there's that. Now let's take a look at some size comparisons here. And I got some pretty good ones. I have some, this is very much in my wheelhouse of uh, favorite size knives. And uh, I've got some good ones here for us to compare them to. Uh, let's bring out a couple mid-end. We have a Benchmade 940. And then we also have a Spyderco Smock. As you can see, uh, lines up pretty well with them in terms of length. Um, in terms of feel and hand, it's really kind of unique. It's definitely more along the lines of the 940, but it's smoother. There's not there's not a whole lot of texture on there, but don't worry because it actually doesn't affect the grip. It has a, a, a very nice grip on this handle, to my pleasant surprise. Uh, if you're looking for more along the budget side of comparisons, here we have the Civivi Imperium as well as the Kaiser Beglider. 
So again, as you can see, it's very much, it's, I have a lot of knives this size because this is a very, very good size for me and a lot of people. Uh, just, just very, very nice. That, uh, that 3.25 to 3.5 inch blade length is, uh, always a very good spot for me to land in. And, uh, there's your size comparisons. There's your specs. Let's start talking about this knife and start with the blade. And uh, what we have here is a typical Rehop blade in terms of thinness behind the edge. We're looking at 16 thousandths behind the edge um, with kind of just a regular flat grind, nothing too high or anything like that. But uh, obviously plenty good cutting geometry, plenty good enough cutting geometry to, uh, to, to tackle any of your EDC needs. I do feel like sometimes we get caught a little too much up in the cutting geometry. I mean, some people do appreciate just a real slicey blade and that's all they want. And that's totally fine, I totally get it. There is something very satisfying about a super thin, high flat grind that's just just a laser beam. And then you have knives like this that are still, I would consider slicey. I mean, they have a thin edge, they have a great steel, they have, they're not too thick, you know, they, they're they not uh, too, too shallow of a grind. There's a lot of good things going on with this blade. Um, so no issues there. Definitely good enough to tackle 99.9% uh, .9 of people's EDC needs. And uh, really what pulls this blade together for me is this swedge. I really like the way the swedge that is completely aesthetic. Um, doesn't even really do anything for weight reduction. I think it's just pretty much all aesthetic, but I really like it. The way it kind of just swooshes in there, ties in the, the spine along with the, the front of the knife. And I also kind of get some uh, Chris Reeve Nandi vibes with this blade. Uh, that's actually kind of minus the swedge, but just the, the actual like curvature of the belly, the way the belly really rounds up towards the tip of the knife, uh, kind of gives me some Nandi vibes there. Uh, not super, super similar, but just enough to make me think about it. Uh, but no, for the blade in general, it's good. Um, I would like to have maybe seen a little jimping there. That would have been nice. Um, but there's not, and there's no jimping up top. There's a little jimping here, but when you're holding this guy in hand, uh, I feel like some jimping right around here and here would have been very nice to get uh, just a little extra traction. Uh, but like I said, there's actually not a whole lot of issue with the handle in terms of ergos. Uh, ergos are actually really good. Uh, they're very, very smooth. They're contoured and chamfered in all the right spots. Um, I have no concern of this knife slipping out of my hand because there is just that subtle little curve to the handle and it's just very easy to get a good solid grip on this knife. I would have no concerns about it. I mean, maybe if your hands are, are like a little greasy or wet, you know, then maybe, but in terms of just an average regular everyday use, uh, no problems there whatsoever. And when you get into the actual materials and fit and finish on this handle, uh, it is every bit Riot. And by that, I mean it's basically flawless. Um, I would consider this perfect execution of a handle. Um, I love Jared Ozer's little emblem here he puts on the on the show side. Uh, there's two things I like about it. One, I just kind of like the shape. It kind of looks like a badge or it just it, it looks a little old school, pretty cool. And there's nothing on it. It's just plain. I like that. It, it's, it's a nice touch of detail, but also keeping it simple. So I really like that. And I like how it works with the carbon fiber. I like how there's no like... Obviously, you know, flaws or chips or chunks missing, but sometimes when you get into carbon fiber like this, there'll be like an overlay or like a lapse in the carbon fiber where you'll see like it's not a flaw, but it's just not really visually attractive. You don't have that on either side of this. It's just a nice continuous wave weave of carbon fiber. And I think that looks really, really good. Um, smooth as can be. And the little pivot collar up here, even that, it's the same color, but it's just, uh, it's better than just the screw being there. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little touch. So very, very nice there. And then honestly, I like the clip side of this knife just as much as the show side, because the clip side, there's two things about this that I absolutely love. Uh, one is definitely the clip. I was a little concerned about the placement of this clip at first, because I wasn't sure how this was gonna feel in my hand here. The one thing that I would maybe knock on a little is I would like to see, when we're talking $385, really gonna pick this apart. I would have definitely liked to have seen that screw recess just a little more so it's totally flush and you don't feel it there. Uh, keep things smooth. Um, but that's obviously very nitpicky, but when you're spending $385 on a knife, you get to be real nitpicky. So outside of that, I don't have any complaints, but this clip is fantastic in and out of the pocket like a breeze. It feels excellent in hand. It doesn't disappear, but you really don't feel it much at all. 
they did a very, very wise decision here in uh, just nipping that little corner there and not really chamfering it or rounding it, but taking off that corner, you don't feel that corner. Like it just, it, it, there's no hot spot, no nothing. Feels great in hand. Really, really like that little bit of detail there. And I just like how the top of the clip is slightly contoured, ever so slightly contoured to where it is just a, just a hair, how do I get that on there? Just a hair rounded. Um, and you notice that really nice chamfering on the sides as well as the carbon fiber. And then when you get up here into the actual bolster lock area, look at that, the little bevel there uh, where the cutout is for the bolster lock. That is phenomenally done. Um, perfect. There's no flaws. There's no chunks. There's no nothing. Uh, very, very nice cutout there. It's just, it's very satisfying. The um, the amount of carbon fiber between the collar and the bolster is just very, very nice, very precise, and looks fantastic. Very nice lockup, as always, and very, very easy access to that bolster lock, um, and the blade pretty much just falls shut, and there you go. It's closed. Now, the fun part about this knife, whoop, this kickstop. It is, even though I totally botched that flip, uh, it is stupid smooth, but a different kind of smooth. Um, obviously, the bearings, you can tell, are completely clean and oiled to perfection. But the fact of how this flipper works and the feel of it, it's a different kind of smooth because you, you definitely have to flip it. This isn't a flipper that you want to push button. You kind of you kind of can, but it's one that is really really satisfying to just the lightest flip rockets the blade out. It it almost feels assisted, but it's not. Um, and what really kind of threw me like for a loop here was the way this kickstop works. This is the first knife I've handled with the Lee Williams kickstop, and as you can see, the flipper tab is completely separate from the blade. This is not all one piece. Um, you can see right there, it, it, it moves and it, and it actually, it has some, it has some side to side play and some, none of that matters. That's, that's this design. That's how it is. There's nothing wrong with this knife. They're all going to have wiggle front, back and side to side. That's fine because when the blade closes, this thing is completely rock solid. Doesn't wiggle side to side, doesn't move up and down. It feels like it's one part of this blade. So there's no issue there. And when you go to flip the blade out, it's just so damn smooth and good. Uh, but it really is its own unique type of action. I, I have to admit, if you haven't handled a kickstop, you won't really understand it until you do. Um, and if someone else would have told me that, I may not have believed them. I thought I maybe would have thought, you know, a Riot Flipper is a Riot Flipper, um, but it's not. Very, very different. Um, and then obviously when you flip it, the flipper just goes in and, and lays in there and it and there's no rattle. There's no nothing. It's completely solid. Um, this is not moving at all when it's closed. The only time the flipper tab is moving is when you're kind of in this halfway position um, in between the blade going from open to closed. So that's it. Uh, close it. Rock solid. Feels like it's part of the blade. No issue. Uh, phenomenal execution of that device and a very crafty engineering from Lee Williams. Really, really like this. The action is super, super satisfying. Um, and it's just a perfect combination. This is a knife that for $385, it really has to be like the perfect storm of um, of outliers, not outliers, but uh, the perfect storm of uh, reasons to buy this. You have a Jared Ozer design, which he doesn't have a lot of production designs out there. And he is um, a rather well-known, highly coveted designer. So you have the Jared Ozer effect, you have the Riyadh effect, and then you have the Lee Williams kickstop effect. So with all the Riyadhs out there, and there's a lot of Riyadhs that are in that $370 to $400 price range, this is one that I do think is, you know, I, I don't have an issue with the price. Is it expensive? Hell yes, it's expensive. But at the same time, each person is ultimately the judge of whether or not something is worth the price. You can say, oh, it's made in China. It shouldn't be that much. Yeah, you could make that case. You could also say, well, I really love Jared Ozer. I've always wanted one of his designs. I can't afford his custom. So this is a perfect, perfect uh, compromise to get the Jared Ozer in my collection. So um, it is one that I would recommend, especially if you like flippers and you just, 
you know, clean, clean designs. This is so clean, so damn good. Um, all the lines match up. It's just, it, it's a great, great knife. Um, I have no real complaints with it, with the, with the exception of that one little screw back here on the clip. I would like to see totally flush so you don't feel it. Uh, very nitpicky, but really all I got. I love this knife. Um, in this price range, it, it may even be a knife of the year knife or a knife of the year contender in the, those top three spots. I don't know. I still got some thinking to do on that, but I really, really do like this knife. Really, really like the uh, the kickstop from Lee Williams. Glad I was able to handle it and uh, definitely plan on getting more kickstops in hand. And maybe I'll even add one to my collection. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, the budget is not allowing for it right now. But um, if you're on the fence about this knife, if you're wondering about it, I would definitely recommend it. I think it's great. If you're used to spending $385 on a knife, I think you'd be very pleased and satisfied with this purchase. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you think about this one. Really hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.